Welcome back, y'all. It's been a little while, a little while longer than I wanted to or I expected to. And today's topic is connected to the polarity of feminine and masculine dynamics. And the title is called Dominance is Godliness. Unless I change my mind, then the title is something else. But that's the structure of the video. And before we get in, I want to share with you why I had to take a little break. And not that I have to justify myself, but YouTube and the work with women, whether that is online or in person, is what is closest to my heart. Like being here on YouTube and having this connection with you, even though I don't see you on the other side, I can feel you. So there's nothing that brings me more joy than to unpack these things with you and to go deep with you. But it's interesting. I had this, let's talk about past here. I had this very annoying belief system that work has to be hard. And if that's an ingrained belief system, we are creator beings. That means that we will create energetic laws in our reality that will mirror that belief system. So just me having a cultural background, coming from Germany, growing up with a single mom that is a ridiculously hard worker, and just seeing that everywhere around in my culture, I have this innate belief system or I had again, past, I had this innate belief system that work has to be really, really hard. And so I projected that into my reality, which means that what was most joyous to me, the YouTube videos, the sessions with my women, became a little more, let's say there was a little too much resistance for me. And I'm like, nah. We don't roll like that. This shit is fun. So whatever in me made it into something ugly, made it into stress, made it into nervousness, made it into obligation, made it into hard work, had to take a step back. And it's so funny. Like everything in my reality is a mirror. So also I take the YouTube algorithm as a mirror. Like, this is not just some random entity that does whatever it wants. I don't want to navigate my reality like that. So the moment this became less joyous than my heart wants it to be, I could see it in the engagement. I could see it in the algorithm. It was just this, this little mind fuck, that, that little game that I played with myself. And... I don't roll like that. Not anymore. I want my life to be joyous. I want my purpose to flow easily. And when work feels like tough work again, I have to take a step back because I believe in the core of my being that this reality can be navigated with ease and grace, that wealth can be navigated with ease and grace. That doesn't mean to be flimsy or to show up inconsistently, but I'm learning how to show up for myself first and foremost, because if I don't show up for myself, you get wonky frequencies. You get a version of me that acts from, let's say, even, even just 40% obligation. And I don't want that. I don't want to receive that from anyone. I don't want anyone to show up for me because of obligation. And I don't want to show up for y'all for obligation. You don't need that. And I don't need that. So this is why I had to take a little break. And also I was very immersed in my one-on-one -on -one work and my sessions. And my mama was here from Germany. So that was also very wild. So here I am. I'm back. <laughs> and my 
my joy would be to create these videos at least weekly just because it, it's so joyous for me. Like that's what I do. I I go deep, right? I'm a Sagittarius through and through. I have like six placements in Sag. So plus my moon is in Pisces. So what I do is I, I go deep into a topic and I go intensely into my my own evolution. And the greatest joy for me is just to share that with you and, and create a community around that so we can all together embody this energy of the Empress, which if you watch videos prior to this one, to me, the Empress energy is the energetics of creation. The Empress is the sovereign creatrix. She's the one that creates her life from purity, the one that lives in tune with nature, and the one that just easily and gracefully creates a harmonious existence here on this planet. Wealthy, healthy, just eternally abundant, radiating the purity of love. That's that's my life purpose. And so I'm here to create a <clears throat> community around that for women that that are on the same wavelength, for women that are on a similar frequency. And it's been quite an interesting ride for me because I come, I don't want to say I come from the bottom, like that's kind of ridiculous. I had a very safe upbringing and a middle-class upbringing in Germany. It's definitely not the bottom, but it is very, very much so connected with struggle. Like I always had food on the table. I always had a safe roof over my head. So again, sometimes when I say like I had to come from the bottom and now I'm climbing my way up, I'm like, come on, Melissa, you're not a fucking rapper. <laughs> like this is a little ridiculous. Yes, it was not always easy. Yes, money was always a struggle, but at the end of the day, you had everything you needed and you grew up quite comfortably. But especially for those that have some connection to the German culture, I don't know a single culture that is so entrapped and imprisoned mentally than the German culture which is really interesting because yes, everyone is safe there, right? We, we have insurance paid for, we have college paid for, and everyone is more or less middle class. Like there is no real lower class like I see it here in the US. Like in the US, you literally have people living in trailer parks and can, they can barely survive. That doesn't exist in Germany like that. Like the infrastructure and um the like the socioeconomic structure is just much much better or much safer i would say but that comes with a very very tough mental imprisonment imprisonment and i can see the cultural difference because now i've been living in the us for almost 5 years and i see that people here have this make it or break it mentality. Like I'll either make it and I make it big or I can't make it at all. Like kind of like this get rich or die trying kind of thing. And that comes with inspiration and creativity. And we don't have that as much in the culture where I'm from. Where I'm from, it's this false safety. It's this false comfort so yeah, I'm, I'm here on this path of evolution in which I believe we can absolutely create whatever our soul longs for. If there's a spark in our being, it's because we're meant to embrace it and we're meant to create it and we're meant to live it. So this has been a really interesting journey. And that to me is the journey of the Empress. Now, I don't want to get myself like too much in flow. That's why I always come at least a little prepared because I can go on tangents and I can like lose myself in a flow. So today's topic is again, like I mentioned, 
connected to the polarity of relationships, the masculine and feminine polarity. And the reason why I teach that is because it saved my life and it saved my relationship and relationships in the past, not so much, but my current relationship, absolutely. And I hear a lot of people having a little bit of a difficult time with hmm, people that teach masculine and feminine dynamics, or at least that came into my field. Like I heard a lot of people say that it's very limiting or that it's dangerous, that it's uh, limited wisdom that is being transmitted. And I hear people calling it a concept or people saying things like, well, gender doesn't exist. Or again, that it's extremely limiting or that it only um, is alive within the spiritual community and that it's kind of like, um, it, it doesn't really have a place. And that to me could be further from the truth. And I believe that all of these people maybe didn't have an bodily reference point for that. There is a reason why so many people are teaching feminine and masculine dynamics. There's a reason for that. It's not just because people are jumping on a bandwagon and it's clickbaity and a lot of people watch it. At least I don't believe that. There is such a For me, this was really such a, how do I say that? Not knowing about these dynamics and not having the vocabulary of masculine, feminine, seeing different dynamics play out caused so much pain and devastation in my life that when I discovered that organically on my path, it literally saved my being. Nothing short of that. And it is not a concept. It's an experience that, again, every single one that teaches that is attempting to put words to it. Of course, teachings will always be limited in a certain way, but they give us a reference vocabulary and then we take that and we create depth within so yeah i agree a lot of the teachings are probably limited but they are so immensely helpful at least in my life they saved me and i know this to be true for so many other people so that's why anytime i talk about relationship here in this channel and i talk about a lot of things right i talk about the the embodiment of the empress and that is connected to financial wealth, that is connected to health, this is connected to ascension, this is connected to energetics, this is connected to transmuting deep wounding, and this is connected to love and relationship and sexuality. So th there's a whole array of things that I love to talk about because it's um, I'm kind of like a jack of all traits in that sense because I have to be. And... Feminine and masculine polarity is one of my favorite, favorite topics because it is it has been the greatest lifesaver in my life. And I want to share with you where I come from and why I don't believe that this is just a concept. Because again, it happened organically in my life through immense devastation, through immense loss, through immense just desperation. And it's not that at some point I just picked up a book and read about it. It was a lived experience. Like I said, I have six placements in Sagittarius. We only teach from experience. And so not embodying a healthy feminine and masculine core for myself caused so much damage and so much pain. And that started very early on in my life and I love storytelling so I'm going to tell you a story about myself because 
first of all, if you listen to me and if you take on some of the things that I share, you kind of deserve to know where I come from, right? This is, yeah, it's, it's a frequency. I transmit a certain frequency and you don't technically have to know my history or my background, but I'm also creating community, right? And we are relating intimately. So it means a lot for me to be able to share where I come from. And I believe it also helps for a lot of people to relate even deeper and maybe even find themselves in my story and be able to transmute certain things just by listening to the story that I went through. And my base dynamic in life was probably very safety oriented. So very, very tangible, very much working in the physical, very masculine. And I didn't have any healthy masculine role models whatsoever. I grew up with a single mom. There wasn't a healthy partner of hers around that could show me what a father figure looks like. There wasn't a healthy grandfather. There really weren't any healthy masculine role models. When I say masculine, I mean man. There weren't any father figures around. So the very first time I encountered a father figure or a brother figure was when I was 14. And that man became the most important figure of my life for many, many years. He was four years older and he became my brother, my best friend, my lover. He was, he was my family. And the moment he entered my life, he brought in this healthy, beautiful, masculine love. This, you're my baby girl. I see you. I don't know you, who you are, but I know you and I'm going to protect you and I'm going to make sure that the purity I see is kept safe. And it was this, like the sense of, which I believe most of women really dream about is when we meet a man, there is such a beauty in having a man recognize you recognize your beauty and this has nothing to do with the outward appearance right this is an enchantment that you cannot fake and it's an enchantment that doesn't come from outside beauty right and and there was this moment when he first saw me even though i was 14 he was 18 there was this oh my god who are you like you're the most beautiful being i've ever seen like i i need to be around you and that in itself is so beautiful and still to this day the only man that i really responded to were men that had this spark right the man that could really see me and i believe that anytime this happens it's an ancient recognition so i know a lot of women love that and i know a lot of women can't really pinpoint why they love this so much or why they crave this you're not asking for too much. You're not. This is a spark. There is an ancient recognition. And it's also the hunter, right? When a man comes forward and he's like, I don't freaking care what I need to do to get you, but I will have you and I will do whatever it takes to get you. There is nothing more attractive than that strength, right? It isn't insecurity. It isn't shyness. It's this I don't care if I'm worthy. I will do whatever I have to do to be worthy to be with you. And again, I know a lot of women crave that and you have every right to crave that because it's this, it's this, it's almost this prey, right? But in a, in a healthy sense, it's like, I will get this. I will have you. And so that was our first connection. And we, ever since that moment, have been best friends, but there was always a little more. So eventually we came together as a couple when I was 18 and he was 22. And it was just this magical and beautiful connection, this ancient recognition. He was my soulmate. Like this 
love that I have and that I had for this man back then go so much deeper. And so there was this filling of so many roles, right? First of all, he was the first person that really saw me and that loved me for all that I was, that loved me for the goofy version of me, the thug version of me, that, you know, that hood rat, the one that that didn't care. He loved my masculine, right? He loved my sense of not giving a shit. He loved my stoicism. He loved my cynicism, but he also loved the tender, sweet version of me. He loved the future version of me. He was the one that always said, man, I can't wait for you to be a grown ass woman and to witness that. Like he was such a healthy love and he was my heart. And to this day, he will always have this big part of my heart and not in a sense that no one else can occupy it, but it's, it's just this, I am him, right? If you spend almost half of your life with someone, you become that person, you influence each other. And I know at this point we had this massive soul agreement. So we then were in a relationship for five years. And this is where it gets quite painful because you can tell I still have so much love for this person and I always will. This love is everlasting because he taught me how to love unconditionally. He taught me how to feel safe and he gave me a family experience that I never had. Like he, he gave me allowance to be exactly who I was and he showed me that I was beautiful in all of my expressions. And he did this to so many people, right? He is, he is an angel and he's an ancient, powerful, masterful creator being. Whether he's consciously aware of that or not, I don't know, but he is. And I am more than blessed to have met this person. But there was this brother-sister dynamic that at this point I understand it, but back then I didn't. Because back then all I knew is I love this person so deeply and I can't imagine life without him. And yet there was no erotic magnetism. And in the beginning, I would push it and I would try to like get into it. And oh my God, of course, you know, things like the taking the pill and all of that had an influence on it. And so I was like 18, 19 years old. And I'm like, why am I not feeling a sexual connection with the person that I love most on this planet? Like, why can I not feel aroused? What is this? And yes, again, there is a deeper archetypal connection between us. Like our, our archetypal connection was more brother-sister relationship. And after that, I met a couple other people that had a similar archetype. And I get it now. There is a brother-sister connection. But back then, it was more than that. Yes, there was this archetypal connection, which was almost like, yo, this is your ancient brother. It is okay that this feels weird. But that didn't exist back then. I didn't live in this dimension. Back then, when I was 18 years old and like until the age of 23, I didn't live in a dimension where something else existed out of this life. It was like, okay, wait, what I'm seeing is what's real and everything else doesn't exist. So I couldn't really, nothing could validate this feeling of brother and sister that I had. But the most massive part of that lacking eroticism, because I believe that everyone can spark it, was me being in a very, very weird masculine shielding. And I saw that the women he was attracted to were very feminine. Like I saw his ex-girlfriends, I knew the women that he felt a connection towards. And there is a deep masculinity in him. But somehow what turned me on when I saw it on the outside, it didn't translate into our relationship. 
because I was too much in my masculine shield. And again, I'm using masculine and feminine. These my audio is playing hard to get. What I was saying is you could use interchangeably yin and yang energies or negative and positive. What I'm saying it's basically just energies that energies that are dancing with each other. And for ease and grace, I call it feminine and masculine. So I was very much in my in my masculine shield. And this kind of put him in a very emotional feminine position. And so I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of that. It just happened. It happened due to my wounding. It happened due to my, my fear and my resistance and just the way I was brought up. And he wasn't aware of it, right? He was probably not aware that, wait, why are, like, why is there so much sexual connection with my ex-girlfriends? But in this dynamic, it doesn't work out. And so we couldn't really speak about it. Like, yes, it became a problem at a certain point. But then there was shame that was connected to the, the shame of like, okay, why aren't we having sex? And the longer the time period of not having sex became, the harder it became to speak about it. Because I couldn't see a solution. I didn't know what was going on. I felt so guilty. I felt like there was something wrong with me. I felt like I was innately broken for not wanting to be intimate with him. It was just really, really devastating. Because if eroticism is the dimension of a lifeness, and when there's no eroticism, there's no aliveness. And eroticism has nothing to do with having sex. Eroticism is the realm in which you smell the roses, in which you get wet because you're touching a flower, in which you're losing yourself in an inspired communication, communion, right? It's when you listen to each other and you're present and their words spark something deep within. And there is just this honest, heart-opening truth that is spoken, right? For a lot of us, this realm opens artificially. I know for me, this realm was first opened through uh, MDMA. And even though I don't, you know, I again, I, I don't make anything the devil. And I think that this was... I needed this reference experience and this so-called drug that at this point I don't utilize it because I want to bring this into my life organically. If you don't have a reference experience for how beautiful life can really be, this can be very vital. So the first time I ever experienced this was on MDMA. And before that, it was quite flat or my system didn't know how to access that realm. And so what I experienced with him was a dying eroticism. And to watch that was so devastating for me and so painful. It was easily one of the most painful like time of my life. And I had like I went through immense pain, but that watching something slowly dying and not knowing how to save it or what to do with that is straight up like it's just devastating and the reason why this has become such a profound like teaching in my own life and something that I want to give to others it's because it can literally save the erotic in our life and in our relationship and so this this dynamic, this unhealthy dynamic in which I just became basically a repellent for love, right? I had this masculine shield on and he became more and more emotional, more and more feminine. And it disgusted me at a certain point. That was hard to watch. And it was at first an internal experience. 
and I couldn't like I couldn't admit it to myself because I I just wanted this person around. I loved him. He was my best friend. Like outside of that realm, we had such a deep friendship and such a deep soul connection. It's like my eyes and his eyes looked at the reality in the same way. It's like I experienced life through his eyes. We were we were kind of one person. It was very interesting. Like there was definitely a deep, deep soul connection between us. So this was something that I didn't want to live without because he was my life. Again, I met him when I was 14. And this is already like 10 years in now. But the moment I spoke it out loud to back then a trusted friend, I couldn't take it back anymore. Like I couldn't take back that feeling of emptiness. I couldn't deny that sense of, of death in our relationship and this hopelessness and this devastation on both ends. And I didn't want him to live without this because like he was ready for marriage and children and something like building an empire and I wasn't. And I didn't see a future for him in which he just lived a sexless life and a life without eroticism because both of us are very sexual beings. And I didn't see that for myself either. So I didn't, I, I had no way out. So the moment I caught myself feeling sexually attracted to another man, that's the moment I had to leave the relationship because before that I just I'm like oh I'm, I'm asexual I was literally at that point where I felt like I was asexual I was man I was confused I was confused af back then and so this is why this means so much to me because if I can clear any confusion for you then all of this is worth it so I had no resources Back then in Germany, no one talked about feminine masculine dynamics. There, there was no, there were no resources, right? And when I caught myself feeling a sexual magnetism towards another man, I'm like, I can't do this. Like this person, our, our relationship and everything is based on truth and honesty. And this love for him runs so deep. So I had to break it off. And it was one of the weirdest breakups ever because there was, such, there was such a deep love. And we literally just packed my things. He drove me home. And we both were like, let's not fucking ruin this. Like, there is such a deep love. Let's, like, we can do this. We can stay friends. And we did, we did stay friends for almost like four years after or three years after but it it wasn't healthy because there was too much resentment because both of us didn't really get what happened right it was very traumatizing I didn't get what happened I just took all of the blame I thought I was just broken I thought I was just severely damaged and fucking off and he probably felt immense resentment because I didn't want to have sex with him, but then he, you know, I basically, I basically left the relationship, but then here I was having affairs and all of that with all of these toxic men. And it was just hard to watch. And at a certain point, this friendship wasn't, it. we weren't what we were back then because the truth was missing. There were a lot of unspoken words because we didn't have answers. So... And I walked around with that guilt for quite a while. Again, mind you, I met this person when I was 14 and he was in my life present for over 12 years as either a brother, a best friend, or my, my lover, my partner, right? Our song was Lovers and Friends, that whole Usher, Lil John theme. Like there was just, that was our vibe. It was real. It was real. And even though we grew up in an environment where we weren't aware of the divine truth of this reality we lived it this rawness this real love it was it was there and so to basically lose this person in my life is to this day still one of the hardest things 
and he's with me. He's with me. So I, I at this point, I, I love him through the ethers and I don't need to be in contact and he has a wife and he has a child and his life is unfolding beautifully. And it's, it's, I'm just freaking happy to witness that, but that doesn't change that confusion from back then. So I took this guild with me and it took me until I moved from Germany in a small town in Germany to Los Angeles to actually uncover my feminine. My feminine essence was basically dormant until I moved to Los Angeles and I met embodied men that were so embodied in their dominance and in their masculinity that they could actually create so much safety in the field that my feminine was able to come out. And that was a transformational experience beyond anything I have ever witnessed before. Uh, it's like I haven't met myself until I met the submissive part of me, the surrendered part of me, right? There, yes, there were parts of me that like to be choked out and be handled rough, but that's like... That's child's play. No, it's not, it might not be the right word, but that's superficial surface level travesty BS compared to what true dominance really does. Like the, these little kinky things and bad have nothing to do with the experience that your body has the moment true dominant masculinity enters your field. And that's an experience I had when I moved to LA. And it's, it's very rare, very little man. He was the son of a very, very high-ranking politician in Yemen. And so it's in their culture, right? He grew up in Islam and he grew up in a, like, in a very politically important family. So I met him in LA in like certain, just certain circles that I got into. And he was a man that was, for me, back then beyond my imagination. Like, where would this little, like, that's how I saw myself. Where would this little girl from Germany and the small town in Germany meet this um, very embodied, powerful man coming, like, just growing, growing up in kind of like a royal family, if you wish so. There was a dominance in his field that only comes from true embodied power. Now, this was because, again, he grew up literally in a royal family. He was seen as the golden son, but he also had a massive spiritual prowess because he had a heart of gold. Like, he comes into the room and he is filled with spirit. Like, his spirit was golden. He was one of the most impressive beings I've ever met. And... Besides that, he was tall and he was very chubby. Like there was just this, like he was a presence. And what his presence did to me was something I've never before encountered. It is almost as if his dominance, which again, let's come back to the word and its root because dominus means godly, right? So the word godly and dominance to me is the same. So his godliness embodied dominance over the field, created an immense safety where nothing but my raw feminine core could exist next to him. Like he made every masculine shield fall away. And this is the moment when I realized, oh wow, 
there was something missing in my past relationship. It wasn't all on me. It wasn't all on my fault. I wasn't inherently broken. He did not embody his true godliness, meaning he wasn't embodied in his dominance. And so having that experience was healing beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And then after him, I met several men that would give me this give me this reflection. Men that were very successful and secure in their being and men that embodied such a natural dominance. They weren't trying. It wasn't this, oh, let me learn now how to be a dominant man. It was in their DNA, which is something that is, again, I don't, I believe absolutely you can heal into this, but that is why I see the importance of a healthy family unit, because if you are a family unit and you can give this to your children, this authority over this reality, this innate dominance, this innate sovereignty, and this cosmic royalty, what they do for this reality is unspeakable and ineffable. The healing these children bring is without words, right? The reason why these men could be such a dominant force or dominant power was because they grew up knowing who they were, knowing that they're here for a bigger purpose. That's a dominance you cannot fake. And that's a dominance you cannot learn until you really integrate that truth of who you are. So again, I met man after man that would pull out different parts of that femininity within me. Men that were so strong in their dominance, meaning their godliness, that it would melt away any barrier I had. Again, this had nothing to do with um, superficial BDSM type of BS. Like, again, that to me is very superficial and it's a travesty of what true dominance really is. It's like, attempting to imitate something that people do not understand yet. And when I met my feminine essence through these very, very strong masculine dominant figures, I met myself again. And I don't believe that I could have I don't believe that at all I could have found that without the strong masculine dominance creating a container for me. And yes, of course, it's heroes gamos, it's the inner marriage, but I needed to see that mirrored. I needed to experience this in the outside world. I needed to have this experience of what a father energy really is. And there's to me nothing more beautiful than a dominant man. <laughs> and what a dominant man does for the safety of all is, again, it's ineffable. It's impossible to describe. And that's why dominance is godliness because what dominance means is embodied dominance in a man is i acknowledge my godliness i acknowledge my responsibility i acknowledge my authority over this field meaning that the moment people step into my auric field, they will feel such an immense safety because I am rooted home. I am rooted in truth. I am rooted in God. I am rooted in nature. I am rooted in an eternal truth. And everyone in me will feel this. And the way I display it is through dominance. 
That is godliness. If you ever meet a man like that, congratulations. Congratulations. Because I believe we are meant to create men like that. I know I'm meant to assist my partner on this journey. I know I'm meant to raise children and boys that turn into men like that. So this is so vital. And the honor and reverence I have for embodied men is, again, I, I could write a million love letters your knees without them having to do anything so again this whole bdsm which is going to be yeah it's probably going to be a topic for another video is a travesty it's a ridiculous attempt to force something upon someone without having this embodied i believe very very little men in this community get the depth of dominance. And so any man who truly is a caretaker for his whole reality has my utmost respect. And this man, again, he won't have to do anything. He won't have to say anything. It is exuded. He exudes strength. He exudes dominance. He exudes and radiates godliness. He exudes safety. There is something in his field that says you are safe here. You are not a sexual object for me. First and foremost, you are my daughter. Started mistaking dominance with oppressiveness. That's something. That's something that I invite every one of us to reverse again. Our words are very powerful. And a lot of people use the word dominance in the same way they use the word oppressive. It has nothing to do with that. It couldn't be further from it. So I invite all of you to use dominance as godliness because that's what it truly means Whew. and that dominance immediately makes us want to surrender and i believe that at the core that is the biggest desire of every woman whether she is aware of it or not. There is nothing as liberating as being able to surrender and submit yourself in the presence of a dominant man, of a godly man. There is nothing more liberating than that. There is nothing more pure than that. And so the only reason I believe that women are operating in this masculine shield or demasculating their partners is because they haven't had a reference experience. And every person that says gender doesn't exist or masculine feminine energies is a concept hasn't had that reference experience. And so the reason why I teach it is not because I read it in a book but because of the divine liberation that my body experienced in the presence of a very embodied and integrated masculine dominant figure, a father figure through and through, right? This is the reason why I'm teaching that or why I'm sharing that, why I'm sharing my experiences. And what I see in women that, because yeah, I, be, I believe there are women that have a very strong masculine core. I do see some of my lesbian friends that 
that have a similar energy. And I can attest that, yeah, they have that godliness. They have a certain dominance. So they are quite manly. That's all right. Again, it's um, gender does exist and it's fluid. Like polarities exist because even in a, in a lesbian relationship, someone has to be the dominant force. That doesn't mean at all times, but th th we always have to assume one or the other. And that's just natural. And whoever says that isn't true, I believe hasn't had the, ex there's no reference experience. I don't believe that to be true, at least not from my experience. So when I see women frustrated in relationships, any time I work with a woman, any time I am in sacred session with a woman, any time we go deep at the core of this frustration is always a flipped dynamic. Always. Like in, in 100% of everything I have experienced in my session so far, it's always the fact that the man isn't in his dominion, isn't in his dominance, isn't in his godliness, isn't therefore in his truth. Therefore, she is forced to embody that. But her feminine essence wants nothing more than to surrender. So there's just so much friction. And it boils down to one thing. The elements of nature are improperly embodied. So women that have this resistance towards that only have this resistance because I believe their man hasn't yet embodied dominance or their shielding is too big that they couldn't even be around a man in his true dominance. But that's also not true because what I've seen in the past is that even the most traumatized woman when that true dominance comes through, she melts. Like, I've seen that. I've seen that with my ex. That was actually a very profound moment. Like, this woman was hardcore. Like, she has been in a cult. She has been abused. She was, like, she was a badass. Like, a tough woman carrying around a gun. Like, it's lipstick. Like, she was a Texan badass motherfucker right? Like a strong woman, not fake strong, but strength. And he was a very tiny, slender, masculine figure. But when his godliness comes out, like when his, again, it has nothing to do with, he doesn't have to be big and, and strong. My ex-partner, he was very like, very slender, very like baby face, like tiny, you know, like same height as me. But when his dominance came out, it created such a safety that you had no choice than to just surrender to that. And when I witnessed that, I'm like, whoa, whoa. This dominance is one of the most powerful forces in this, in this reality. So the moment his, his true heart, his truth opened and he created this dominant field and held space for this woman, for me to see this woman like... does it melts away all of our barriers really all of our barriers and the only reason why your barriers maintain or there's this imbalance is because your partner hasn't found that dominion over his field he hasn't found his embodied godliness and it's not that i want to put all of this pressure onto the man but an awakened man can awaken a woman in an instant when a man holds a dominant field he will 
allow all barriers to melt in an instant. That's just what I've seen in the past. That's what I've experienced in my relationship. Anytime my partner assumes his truth, meaning his dominance, nothing, no barrier maintains. I melt. women or mother figures to get him to this point like it took father figures to get me to the surrendered state so anytime I see a broken dynamic it boils down to one thing which how deeply is your man in his dominance if the erotic is missing how deeply surrendered are you in your feminine state and how strong of a masculine presence is he so you can surrender to his dominance? And again, maybe some women do not want this consciously because they haven't experienced it yet, because they have no reference point in their body. That's the people that call this a concept. That's the people who say gender doesn't exist. When you experience this amount of liberation, you know this exists. Like in nature, elements exist. And elements don't fight with each other, right? There's always one dominant element. And it takes both of these elements to play with each other. But there's always one dominant element. Dominant element. Like let's say wood and fire. There wouldn't be fire without wood. Fire need, needs wood to burn but they're not fighting. The fire in this scenario is the dominant force and the wood is the surrendered force. It's nature, it's the interplay of elements. So when we come together, there's an interplay of, of elements. When my man is in his fire and I'm wood, I'm surrendered to him, right? And he needs me to burn. So it's this, there's just beauty and there's just, and acting according to our properties. And the same with the element of fire and water. Water in this interplay is the more dominant element. So water and fire, they don't fight together. Fire submits to water. So the moment my water comes out, his fire will submit to my water and the other way around. It's just a beautiful interplay. It's nature. And once we accept this, we can experience the beauty of it. And so anytime you feel a disconnect or a lack of eroticism, either of you isn't in truth. Like if you are witnessing your man and there's just no magnetism, it's because he's not in his truth. And I, again, I don't want to just push it on one. It takes both of us to be responsible. But oftentimes your responsibility as the oracle is to, to bring his truth forth, right? So if you witness an interaction in, in which he isn't in his dominance, it is your divine obligation to call forward his dominance, to call forward his godliness, to call forward his truth. And I have so many examples from the women I work with and also my own life that when a man is not in truth, there is nothing more honestly, disgusting and depolarizing than that. For example, even with her, his mother, if a man lies to his mother, he lies to the oracle of the mother, there is nothing more disgusting than to witness that as another woman. So there was this example of a, like a friend of mine and that is just a, a little tiny example, but that's that's the difference. Like we need these little examples to to give you a feeling of what do I mean by anything. 
anything that exists outside of this religion is the devil. And so he was basically asking his mother for, I think his sister's exact birth date because he wanted to check on her astrology. And he asked his mother for the birth time, but because he knew his mother is very Christian, he was kind of like telling her, hey, um, I just want to know if she's a morning or an evening baby. That was a lie. His wife was there with him and witnessed that. And she was kind of like complaining about the mother. But what she didn't see was what actually happened is he wasn't in his truth. He wasn't in his dominion. He wasn't in his dominance. He wasn't in his godliness. And that's a freaking turn off because that's unsafe. A safe man, a man in his dominance, regardless if it's his mother or not, he would create a dominant field because that also will make his mother feel safe. And a man in his truth would have been like, mother, I know that you don't believe in all of this. I know you don't approve of all of this, but to me, it means quite a lot. And I'm curious about this. So I would love her birth time because I want to check her astrology, even if you don't approve. Because to me, it's interesting. To me, it is my path. And I'm curious about that. And we both know, if you don't give me the birth time, I will find it somewhere else. So I'm asking you and I'm being honest with you and it would mean a lot to me. That's dominance. That's dominance. To say, oh, could I have her birth time because I just want to see if it's if she's a morning or evening baby. That's a lie. It's a lie. And so to witness our man in this is disgusting. That's weakness. He's not in his godliness. He's not in his dominion. And so there are many examples for that. Any time your man is not defending your truth, is not standing for truth, is not speaking his truth, it is our divine right and our divine obligation to call his truth forth but it does take a base to work with right there needs to be already a strong desire for truth and dominance and these are examples of how dominance can look like dominance simply is i live my truth in every moment and dominance is someone's dominance does not mean that your man is the sole decision maker and I thought that was so beautiful I recently visited this wolf sanctuary with my mother it's here in Sedona and their purpose is to have you meet the wolf as the spirit animal so they have only four wolves and their rescues and you get to meet the essence of the wolf and what we learned there was that there are alpha males and there are alpha females in the pack. And so the alpha males, the alpha wolves, the male wolves are the ones that protect the pack, the ones that will fight for the pack, the ones that make sure that the pack is safe, right? The ones that observe. But the female alpha wolf is the decision maker. And so it's very, I thought that was so interesting because the female alpha wolf is the one that makes the decisions. Now, both of them are leading, right? One of them is leading and navigating in a sense of, okay, I got to make sure that we're safe from predators. But the alpha female is making the decisions. And I see this beautiful symbiosis in our relationships, right? There is an oracle that governs the relationship. And the like, let's say, let's say this is the third entity. It's the nature. There's always your partner, you and a third entity, which is the oracle or which is the voice of nature. And usually the feminine has a deeper access to that voice of nature because of her physical womb. So you as the woman become that that voice for the the third entity, for the oracle, for the voice of nature. 
And so in that, the voice of nature, the oracle makes the decisions. And so the feminine is the decision maker. And if you have a man in his dominion, he knows that. He knows that. A godly man is as much surrendered to your oracle as you are surrendered to his guidance and his, his protection. But you make the decisions as the oracle. And this is not your ego. It's not that your ego is making the decisions. Right? Your, your man is leading, but he's leading because he can pick up on your decision making. Like it's not that black and white. Like there is so much divine dance here because a dominant man will always act in accordance to the highest good. And you are usually the one that brings through the oracle. You bring through the highest good. You're, you don't even have to say it. Your field is making decisions, right? Your field is communicating what the highest course of action is. And it's his duty to pick up on that and create it and lead you to, to that. And anyone who says, well, that's so limiting, doesn't comprehend the divine interplay of that. There's nothing more exhilarating than that. There's nothing more opening or freeing than that. And again, it's, it's very subtle. All right, this is very subtle and it's kind of tough to explain sometimes, but I'm doing my best to convey this beauty in that dynamic. And the only reason why our body submits to a dominant man is because a dominant man always, always honors the feminine or always honors the oracle. There is no true dominant man if he doesn't honor the oracle. Like that's part of the dominance. And that's also the beautiful example here. And now I'm bringing back BDSM, but they actually, um, they've actually traced brainwave activity in someone who is a masterful dom. And again, I'm not saying there aren't like examples in the BDSM community. I don't, I don't dabble in that realm. I don't know about that. I'm sure there are very divine examples um, or rare examples, masterful doms in, in a BDSM realm. But what they did, they actually measured the brain activity of the dom. And what they found is that it has nothing to do with oppressiveness. A dom is in a flow state, almost like an artist, to such a degree where he is so in tune with the submissive one, with the with the surrendered one, that he can pick up on the subconscious desires of the submissive one. And everyone who had a very masterful experience of a dom um, or anyone who's ever found themselves in an encounter like that you can you can attest that it's so freeing because you are surrendering your everything to this person and this only works if the person holds you in the highest reverence right there there's nothing but godliness in this interaction and that shows you that the dom is as much surrendered as you are so it's just such a beautiful and divine experience. Wow. So beautiful. So there is a reason why we deeply crave Like our soul craves a masculine, a dominant 
man, a godly man. There's a reason why sometimes we have the only reference point for that is like, oh, we're being choked out and it feels really good. Why does it feel so good? And again, that's very superficial. This might be our first introduction to that. It goes very, very deep because it's so energetic. And the more masterful a man becomes with that, the more beauty enters your life. And again, I, I came prepared, so I just want to make sure that I feel complete here. Yeah. I do feel <laughs> very much complete. So what a, what a freaking beautiful topic. Mm -hmm. Not a concept, but a lived experience. So you have every right to crave a man in his dominance. You have every right to feel repelled when your man isn't in his dominance. Because anytime your man isn't in his dominance, he's in his weakness and he's in his, he's not in his truth. Whew. So I'd love to know about your experiences in the comment section. I'd love to hear your, yeah, your lived experience on it. Not, not your opinion, but I'd love to hear your lived experience and what dominance means for you or how you experience liberation. So please feel free to get really active in the comment section. I, I always answer, um, especially when there is like a, there's a thoughtfulness or if I can feel there's an interaction, I always answer. And please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I am creating a community where we can come together and I'm excited to meet more of you one-on-one. -on -one. I'm excited to meet more of you in group settings. And so speaking of that, on the 11th, 11th, wait, shit, no, sorry, <laughs> it's the 22nd, I pushed it back, sorry, um, yeah, there, there's this nine-month mastermind, and I just kept pushing it back, because it's, um, yeah, I, I underestimated the amount of work that goes into our life event here in Sedona, which that is on the 11th, 11th, 11th 11th Sedona Starseed Summit it's our community powwow where we come together Sedona community comes together and we go deep we do breath work we make music like it's a weekend event but that is on the 11th 11th so the mastermind is on the 22nd of November and it's going to be a nine month deep dive I have deep dive. I have an intro video on YouTube, but again, it's, that is the structure. So that's the masculine intention, but the volition might change because it's going to be a very intimate container. I already have five women and most of these women are women that I worked with one-on-one. -on -one. So there's already like a very deep foundation. And I want this to be a container of maximum 10 women because it's meant as the Oracle round table. So yes, it is uh, basically like a whole new chapter. We're walking into a new body. We're walking into a new existence. And for that, we are clearing out every single energy center. But it's deeper than that, right? Because as we come together, we will create the curriculum together. So we will see, well, what comes up? What's alive right now? And what do we have to dive dive deeper into? So yes, there is this intro video, which goes in depth of my volition, but as we come together, this is an alive mastermind. We're meeting every month for nine months. There will be a lot of transformation. Everyone who has worked with me one-on-one -on -one knows we go deep and there is massive change and we're all coming together for this change. So if you're craving this community, and again, these are beautiful and powerful women, there are still spaces left. 
and it would be an honor for you to to be there and it would be an honor to have you there and uh, if you have an easier time with payment plans you can text me you can connect with me i don't have it up on the side yet for some reason my website doesn't offer that which is slightly annoying but we can figure something out through paypal or whatsoever so you can also pay monthly just for you as a little like assistance so i am so excited to be back here oh my fucking god i missed youtube i really missed it and thank you for everyone watching thank you for everyone going deep i hope this gave you permission right may i be your permission slip to crave what you crave to detect lies when you detect lies to feel repelled when something's not in truth and to feel immensely attracted when you see dominance in the field like giving you all the permission for that i'm also excited of course to go deeper into these topics in the mastermind and very excited to connect intimately like i said if you crave more depth and community and women that are on the same path as you the mastermind is opening and i'm always available for one-on-one -on -one sessions so please like subscribe or share this video if it helped you let's grow this channel let's create a bigger support system for all of us and let's create a community in which we all can rise together i love you so freaking much and god yes i'm happy to be back god i'm happy to be back also share this video with your man out there or with your brothers because i feel like it's um very healing for them to he to hear the perspective of a woman and to hear how that dominance feels on the receiving end i love you <laughs>